Welcome friend. Today we're going to butcher an old washing machine and make a multi-purpose rotary tool. The idea with this one is I want something that can do green sand mulling, 360 degree photography type stuff and be a welding rotary table as well. Possibly it might even be a pottery table thing. Let's get started. So we're basically just going to undo everything we see. Hopefully that motor still works. If you've seen any of my other videos, you've probably got a sense that I'm really passionate about material-based design, or that is using whatever junk you have to hand, and it's amazing to me how much cool stuff there is inside a washing machine. The ubiquitous series-wound universal motors that come in these things is about three quarters of a horsepower, so it can be useful for all kinds of workshop tasks, like running a small lathe or a pillar drill, that kind of thing. One of the problems with reusing motors like these is that if you plug them straight up to the mains they screech away at a ridiculous RPM and the centrifugal forces can in fact tear the motor apart. For this project we're going to use closed loop speed control based around an Arduino and there'll be plenty more on that later. I should mention that some of the inspiration for this project comes from Lucky Gen 1001 who's got a really cool sand muller he made from uh, washing machine parts. In his machine he uses an induction motor with a gearbox and in my experience they're very rare in washing machines these days. It's much more common to have a poly v-belt system in combination with one of these brushed so-called universal motors. As you saw this spider was riveted to the drum, sometimes they're bolted so they're a bit easier to remove. They're almost always covered in sludge and gunge though. Heavy. Here's some of the prize bits we're going to use for this multi-purpose rotary table build. Minus the drum there, we won't use that though, it's great for other projects. And some of the plastic gubbins that will go for recycling. When I checked the main bearings here earlier, they seemed nicely free of any play and in perfectly good working order. So here I'm just trying to circularize that plastic lump they're embedded in so that I can put it into the top of this machine. Based on the scraps of plywood I had handy I'm gonna make the diameter of this turntable about 700 millimeters. I'm laminating three sheets together for this and the beauty of doing that is that the defects in each of the sheets will cancel each other out. So this is going to be the underside of the platen, spinning platen thing and the spider is going to sit on like this and you'll notice it's shaped a bit awkwardly. The plan is to cut this middle circle bit out and I've drawn these extra circles on here because once I cut the middle out it'll be hard to find the center. They'll be useful for just aligning this spider. Apart from that I need to clean this up because I'm getting dirty hands every time I touch it and let's get on with it.
think that's going to work. Plain back, that should look okay, and we'll cut our little dials in there. The top, this plywood's super strong thick, which is great. The bearings in this probably aren't the most ideal for this application where there's going to be weight bearing down on them because they were designed to go that way around and have this big spinning drum off the top. But considering the loads they have to take in a washing machine at quite high speeds, I'm hoping a low speed application here is going to be okay. If not, there's not much lost. They came free. Encountered a problem uh, I probably should have foreseen but here it is this is the pulley that mounted on the end of the spider it gives a 16 to 1 speed reduction from the motor which is good because the motor is a universal motor and it likes to run at high rpms that's where it's got its most power but we want this running quite slowly so we do want to use this the bottom of the spindle only just pokes down and that is not going to reach because this is snagging so i want to have it that way round to do that it's going to need a bit of modification now ever since i did a video review of this motor saw i've learned two important things one is that it can be really useful for odd little jobs like this if like me you don't already have a normal kind of scroll saw but it's still ridiculously fiddly to get the blade in and out and two is that i underestimated the depth of brand loyalty dremel had and how little mercy those dremel tool lovers would show in the comments that's the rotating platter working let's look at how we're going to mount this washing machine motor avoiding getting any swarf inside i figured that i could use the existing system to kind of mount it on a pivot so that it could be tensioned against the belt 
It turned out that the turning of that scrap bread pipe you saw me doing earlier was unnecessary as this nice ground steel rod which I got out of the old car gearbox is doing the job just perfectly. The mount bracket here is made from scraps of oak and because of the grain direction I figured I better add a little bit of reinforcing to this part here. The Jubilee clip does this nicely and is a nice way to clamp it together while the glue dries and the second part of the mount just gets aligned by having the shaft go through it and clamped on. And the whole structure gets enlarged just to spread the load across the sidewall of the washing machine. Running it off this power supply here. These motors are known as universal motors because they run off DC or AC and an old ATX power supply like this is a nice way of testing these motors because the low voltage won't cause runaway speeds. Well, that's a lot better. So here's where we're at at the moment. I've been scrounging around for a bit of something to make the brackets that are going to go up here. This is all I've come up with. A bit annoyingly though, if I cut this in half, it's not quite long enough. We'll get around it. I've got to admit, I'm not looking forward to <laughs> preparing this very rusty piece of metal. Just get on with it. <laughs> Three whole minutes I'm going to shake this for. I need to make a machine to shake these for me. Give me freedom for my soul. Oh. While we're on the cleaning and prepping trail, I want to use this scrap of sheet metal to form the base and sides of the mulling part of this multi-machine. I realise I'm jumping around a little bit with this video. Uh, this is because chronologically this is just how I did it. I kind of tested the concept first before wanting to waste my time painting the frame and so on. So now I'm putting the ply top and the under frame that kind of clamps those bearings back in place.
So I've been hunting through the screws from the washing machine and out of those, these are the most promising. You might think it's a little bit crazy and time consuming to reuse the screws from the washing machine. And you might be right, but in general, it just gives me a good feeling to reuse as much as oh, possible. Yeah. Just adding that top one, I can feel how much more solid the whole thing feels. So we're on track, we're on track. I'm remembering straight away why I don't like bear rides. <coughs> Next step, uh, maybe putting the motor thing on and doing the motor mount. I so need another hand. Yes. <laughs> yep. So yeah, I guess we're gonna just spring tension it somehow, like from there around this corner bit or something. Oh shit, oh shit. I've got the motor wired up to an ATX power supply. I'm all ready to try this out. I just need to plug it in. Yeah! <laughs> Okay, so this is great. Obviously, it needs motor speed control. Um, I might have to call it that. Actually, maybe I'll, I'm just going to flatten off the edge of the disc, the circular disc, now that we've got it spinning because that's so exciting. And then I'm going to go for some blissful sleeping. So, yeah, see you in the morning after <laughs> I do some spinny roundy routing, I think, if we can work out how to rig that up. The router bit's very close to the spinning disc. How I very incrementally and slowly push the two together, that's going to be the trick to this whole operation. Now, the astute and router wise among you will know this was a foolish way of attempting this both the method and trying something like this late at night. That resulted in a big gouge which I corrected through setting the position and then nibbling downwards using the fine depth adjustment knob. Well as you can see the finish isn't excellent. So straight away there's a few things I would have done differently there. Having a sharp route a bit definitely would have helped. The nibbling down from the top, the method I kind of settled on in the end was much better than going, trying to push the things together from the side. <laughs> Yay, it worked okay. Right, for now I'm off to bed. I'm completely knackered. Thanks so much for watching, friend. If you want to see this machine taking proper shape, I will link to it on the right hand side as soon as it's ready. Please like the vid if you did and run down the street shouting about it to all your friends.